Hi, so Raspberry Pi, we, we have it initially connected to a regular monitor, and that's the, really the only way to get started with Raspberry Pi that I'm aware of. Um, uh, you can, you can if, if you're on a small network, you can go in and, and locate the IP address by kind of searching the network uh, uh, through a terminal on a different computer. It's a lot easier just to plug it into a monitor and find the IP address from there, okay? But we wanna get it off that big monitor and kind of use it as a small computer. Uh, so basically what we've got here is we've got this touch screen and we're going to go ahead and put it on the Raspberry Pi. So uh, what, you know, there's good and bad aspects of this. One is that we're taking up these headers, which we're which we might need late, later on these GPIO headers. Uh, but we'll deal with that. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. So, um, oop, I shouldn't just plug it in. Uh, there you go. I almost made a mistake. In fact, you could say I did make a mistake. So basically, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and shut down uh, the Raspberry Pi. You don't wanna be plugging in uh, hardware except for USBs or like these peripherals uh, while the computer's on. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and shut it down, then remove the power and then plug in uh, the screen. Okay, one major difference between Linux uh, machines and uh, uh, Apple or Windows is the driver management. So there's a whole system, a whole ecosystem of hardware and drivers for Windows and Apple. Apple in particular just manages the whole process. I mean, that's why, you know, only certain things work with Apple, right? And they work really great. And that's because Apple actively manages the drivers and has a whole system for making sure everything works when you plug it in. Windows is a little bit more free form, um, but still the driver support is really great. When you get to Linux and get to different flavors of Linux, you have to be more careful about the type of hardware that you use. And you have to plan on basically uh, needing to do uh, a little bit more configuration in order to use hardware. So, so we went ahead and put this uh, touch screen on here. Uh, and then we're booting up Raspberry Pi. Uh, and we're going to be actually uh, uh, operating it still on our uh, HDMI um, Uh, monitor. So, okay, so here we go. Okay, so there's a, this, this is from Adafruit, so it's a 2.8 inch, uh, 300 by 20 by 240 TFT. Adafruit makes a bunch of different screens kind of similar to this. Uh, they have a 3.5 inch, and they have a non-capacitive touch, but they have a pretty good system. Um, So go ahead and search Adafruit TFT Easy Install. Okay, uh, so here we go. It's our first, uh, first item to come up here. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna download some software and run some, uh, some installer scripts. So, so here we go. So basically you're gonna go down the page to this code right here, okay? And we're going to go up and open the terminal, and we're just going to uh, copy and paste one line at a time. So we're going to go uh, Control C in the browser, Control Shift V to paste it into the terminal, and enter. So we just change directory to the home directory of the user. Uh, in this case, our user is Pi, right? So we're in Pi, and then we see that tilde is is a shorthand for the home directory of that user. Okay, the next one here, we're gonna apt is the is the way that you, apt is the program that installs software on Linux. So we're gonna apt install, apt get install. You don't actually have to type the dash get anymore, but install dash y says that to accept all defaults and then git and python 3 dash pip. Git is a, uh, is a source uh, control software that's widely used. And then python 3 pip is, uh, pip is the, is the um, uh, package manager for Python. So that's what we're doing there. Now we're gonna use pip and we're gonna install something into our Python installation. Notice we're not using a uh, virtual environment or anything. We're just installing it into the Python installation for the user that we're logged in under, in this case, pi. So sudo uh, pip3, or sudo, I don't know how to say that. Pip, sudo pip3 install uh, double dash upgrade, Python, Adafruit Python dash shell space clicks. So we're installing two things here. We go ahead and hit enter. Okay. While that's working, we go ahead and copy the next command. Okay. So it's collecting this Adafruit. So Adafruit Adafruit is basically uh, added in some uh, some software. 
uh, to the package manager for Python, which is really convenient. Okay, so now we're gonna go git clone. So we're basically gonna clone a Git repos GitHub repository, and that will create a folder called Raspberry Pi installer scripts uh, in our current directory. Okay, so there we have it. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and CD change directory into that directory that was just created by cloning the Git repository. And now we have to choose one of these commands, and here's where you need to be careful. Okay, so console install command. So basically, if you do any of these, you're gonna be, you're not gonna see a desktop when you reboot. So don't do these. Uh, we we wanna just go ahead and have the desktop running, even though it's not super efficient, it does take up some RAM. Uh, we're gonna use this Raspberry Pi to do a couple of things that are gonna be easier to do with a desktop environment. So we're, that's what we're wanting to leave it on. So we wanna go down here to this FBCP install. So we basically wanna mirror the HDMI output, okay? So basically, um, we're on the 2.8 inch capacitive touchscreen. So we're just gonna go ahead and copy this command right here and control C and control shift V and enter. Okay, so for Pi TFT 2.8 inch capacitive touchscreen. Okay, so this is what should happen. It's great that they give us kind of a preview about what we should be looking for. So that's gonna happen now. Okay, so it takes a while, so uh, basically just relax, maybe go get a beverage. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's uh, going to download a bunch of software and install it in the background. This is a Python script, so it could be doing just about anything. Uh, basically, whoever wrote the script is, is sending, us, sending out print commands to kind of keep us updated as the thing works. So... Um, Okay, so it's still installing. It's gonna just gonna take a couple more minutes here. All right, the download speed can be faster or slower based upon the network that you're on. Okay, so we're still waiting for it for, to install here. Should just be another minute. Okay, there it goes. So once it, once it actually downloads, it goes pretty quick. And we're kind of under a minute here. Okay, so at this point we're gonna go ahead and reboot, so it's shift Y. Oops. Shift 
apply and enter, and then Python's gonna reboot for us automatically. Okay, so once, once the screen goes off here, uh, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna go ahead and unplug the, um, the HDMI cable uh, and see how it works. So, so at this point, it should be turning back on. There we have it. So, so basically, what we see here is that uh, there's uh, we have the TFT screen, the capacitive touch screen, uh, and you notice that you can barely see it, but basically the uh, mouse is following my uh, finger, and yeah. So basically, what I can do is that I can basically control this the computer now with touch screen, which is kind of nice. So, or convenient. All right, uh, best of luck with installing the capacitive touchscreen.